All right, this is fourth grade module three, lesson four. And in this lesson, we are going to be addressing the long-standing, super famous rule of when you're multiplying by 10, just stick a zero on it. Or when you're multiplying by 100, stick two zeros on it. And the big question is why? And actually that method, that rule, doesn't work when we suddenly start talking about decimals. So this lesson talks about why does that trick, why does it work the way it works, why does it make sense, and the idea is it, we're going to teach students so that even when we start talking about decimals, students will be able to use this method, this deep understanding. So we're going to start by, it says, draw place value disks and arrows as shown in this example. There was an example. Uh, to represent each product. So the idea is we're going to start with 7. So what does 7 look like? Well, 7 looks like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So we have 7 ones in our place value chart. Now, because 100 can be thought of as 10 times 10, so we now know that, let's see, um, 7 times 10 means these guys move over to the next column over and we get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So that's times by 10 and I'm going to put it in here times by 10. And then we get those, we're going to multiply, we're going to take these guys and we're going to multiply by 10 again, multiply by 10, which moves them one more column over again. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And there is our answer. So the idea is when you multiply by 10 and 10, you're going to take your group, move it over one column for the first times by 10, and you're going to take them and move them over again for the second times by 10. And what do we end up with? We end up with seven hundreds. So we've got 7 times 100 is 700. We've got 7 times 10 times 10 is 700. And we have 7 ones times 100 gives us 7 hundreds. All right. Now parents and teachers, it's perfectly fine for your students to fill in this bottom one first and then work your way up. In fact, to me, that actually makes more sense. Now there is a really kind of a cool thing that eventually our students are going to be seeing, which is, okay, so we've got ones, tens, hundreds, hundreds, and we're going to start off with our seven ones, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and the idea is because we are multiplying by a hundred, that means our dots are going to move over two columns and we're going to end up with seven in the hundreds column. All right, So that's eventually going to be our shortcut rather than doing it in two steps times ten to move it over one times ten to move it over a second time we're just going to times by hundred and move it over two columns all at once. So this is going to be our shortcut and of course ultimately we're not even going to be using the place value chart because we're just going to know it off the top of our head. So here we got another example so we've got seven and again it's seven in the ones column one two three four five six seven now this time we are multiplying by ten times ten times ten so what's going to happen well, these guys are going to move over one column for times by 10. They're going to move over a second column for times by 10. And then they're going to move over into that third column. And we're going to end up with one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, because we have multiplied by 10 a third time. So we got times by 10, times by 10, times by 10. What do we end up with? Well, we end up with seven in the thousands place. So that means we're going to end up with seven thousands. 
Remember, here's the shortcut that eventually we're going to be getting to. We've got the ones, the tens, the hundreds, and the thousands. All right, and by the way, teachers, I always write these out in front of the students. I never pre-write these because I want students to repeatedly see me write these out so it's just drawing their attention to the fact that these columns have names and that students need to memorize these names. Ones, tens, hundreds, thousands. So we're going to start off with seven in the ones column. And the idea is because we are mul multiplying by a thousand, we are going to move to the left three columns. And that's going to give us one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in the thousands column. And of course, so that equals seven thousand. Here, we're going to continue that previous experience and, and we're just going to solve. Only now they're giving us some missing blanks and students are going to be filling in the blanks. For example, we're missing something times by eight. We know we're going to end up with 800. So what are we missing? We're missing 100. Uh, let's take a look right um, here. So 1,000 times 4, what are we going to end up with? Well, we're going to end up with 4,000. Let's do something a little more tricky. Um, oh, how about this one? We end up with 8,000. That's our product. And then something times 1,000 gives us 8,000. What are we missing? We're missing the 8. I think you get the idea. We're going to let students fill in the blanks using their logic. They don't need to demonstrate any big old math understanding at this point in the game. We're going to get a little bit more complicated in that we're going to start, let's do 17. So we're going to start with 17 and we're going to multiply by 100, which is 10 times 10. So what's going to happen? Well, we're going to start with 17 means we're going to have 1 in the tens column and 7 in the ones column. Now the idea is because we're going to multiply by 10, and multiply by 10 again. That means our 10 here is going to multiply by 10 and it's going to go here and then we're going to multiply by 10 again times by 10 again and that's going to end up with a dot in the thousands place. Similarly now, if we do that with the ones, we start with seven ones. We're going to multiply by ten, and what does that give us? That gives us seven in the tens column. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then when we multiply by ten again, multiply by ten again, what does that give us? That gives us ten, I mean seven in the hundreds column. So what do we end up with? Well, we end up with one in the thousands place and seven in the hundreds place. So we end up with 17, technically this is 17 hundreds, which is really 1,000 plus 700, and we can write it like that. So this 1700s teachers, if students want to call this 1000 and 700s, that would be also an understandable and acceptable answer. And the last slide, decompose so that we can um, really uh, formally learn that trick, right, of multiplying by ten hundreds or thousands. And the idea is, oh, let's do this one, not number nine. So five times five thousand. So that really means five times five times a thousand, which is twenty-five times a thousand. And at this point, we want students to recognize that that's going to be twenty-five thousand. All right, let's take a look at question eight. 
So 2 times 400. So that's going to be 2 times 4 times 100. That's going to give us 8 times 100, which is 800. All right. So the idea is students indeed are going to start recognizing, oh, you just take the 3 and the 5, you multiply them to get 15, and then you take this 0 and you drag it over, and you get 150. They're still going to get to that beautiful little shortcut. The idea, though, is we want to try and make it make sense to our students rather than just it be a trick. And that wraps up fourth grade, module three, lesson four, learning that technique for multiplying by a ten hundreds and a thousand.